This is a Stand Up Labs production, powered by digital media. Hey folks, uh, this episode, big warning out there, I talk negatively about Muhammad Ali. Well, I'm not saying he's a bad guy, I love Muhammad Ali, I'm just pointing out some hypocrisy with the way people might see him. I liked it, somebody's gotta do it. But yeah, listen, that's a, this is a cold open, I'm for a hot opening. Yeah. But uh, yeah, listen, we go into massages, California, baseball games, grops, whatever you got. Yeah, and uh, you're already listening to it, so I don't know why we're doing this. Me neither! Hey there, everybody. Go to MacWeldon.com. If you haven't already, you're a dummy. you got to go to MacWeldon.com and use promo code TUESDAYS. It's better than anything you're wearing right now. they got great underwear, great socks. I'm in bed wearing Mac Weldon underwear right now. The T-shirts are as soft as pie or something that is soft. It's nice, soft T-shirts, loose, tight underwear. It's the best clothes you'll buy. Everything is antimicrobial, and it's easy shopping. Go to MacWeldon.com and use the promo code TUESDAYS. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. It is stylish. Chicks dig it. It's comfortable. It's really the best clothes that I own. I swear to God, I'm not just saying that. MacWeldon.com, promo code TUESDAYS. Why else would we talk about it every week? I'll admit, they are paying us, but it's also great clothing. I wear it every day. MacWeldon.com, promo code TUESDAYS. Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Hey! This is a first, everybody. This is the first episode that's ever begun without Mark in his seat. So it's just me carrying the whole cock and balls here. And I thought what would happen was Mark would just jump into his seat. There it is. Holy hell, sorry, I was wiping my ass. Yeah, you took longer because I thought it was going to be a gag, and it ended up being like Major League Two when Bob Euchre passes out and the, the color guy is oh, white, yeah. but color... Color man. Yeah, that happens a lot with me, with color guy. Uh-huh. Because it sounds racist. Yeah, well, it's, it's not colored. Right. So you're all right. But color man sounds like a... a a more ignorant way to say colored man. Yeah, and then there's the color, color, man. color commentary, right. which is mostly about black people. So then that's weird. Well, depending on which sport you're watching. They got True. hockey has color commentary. Okay, there you go. Let's talk about uh well, we, we talk about race and nobody likes it cuz we're uh, oh some people like it, but we're two white guys and there's two white there's four white guys here in the room. Only two of us uh on the show. Mhm. Are those Shelby chimes? Uh, Too much, if you ask me. I was on the train here, the two train, Forty Second Street. To, I, I ran into a couple of kooks on the way here. Oh, I love One of them, nice. you got a, you got, you saw. I walked in a store. I thought you were getting chewed out by an old bag. I was getting chewed out by an old crazy racist woman. Yeah. Well, we'll get to that in a moment. But um, ah, maybe she wasn't. I don't know what she was. But anyways, she I'm on the prejudice. The two train from Forty Second to Seventy Second, and. Uh, Great Express, by the way. The most convenient Express for me. Mm. That and the D, which goes from 34th to 4th. That D goes right through the city. Yeah. Like a big old cock. Yeah, big steel dick. Yeah. We've all been there, folks. <whistles> anyway, so there's this young... I wish there was, we had an African-American guest here, because I'd like to get their opinion. Maybe mm -hmm. they can write in. We have actually uh, a lot of listeners yes. of the Black Persuasion. Thank God for that. Yes. Chris Allen, I'm looking at you, buddy. Kofi, wow. Kofi, I'm looking at you. The rapper? No, he's a comedian. No, 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 the rapper guy. Oh, the rapper. Yeah, yeah. What the hell was his name? I already forgot it. Slick Shit. Rick. Experiment, I think. Was that it? Oh, that's Maybe a good not. name. Fuck. I already forgot it. Uh, but I have it in my heart. What was his baby shoes? What was his name? <laughs> no. No, that's a different guy. All right. But well. anyways, I'm on the train, two, two train. And there's a couple of probably teenage uh, black kids, 14 or so. Yeah. And uh, the one kid, he used the N-word. I'm not joking, not exaggerating, a lot of hyperbole. I would say 17 times on a three-minute train ride. Uh, I was expecting more, to be honest. 17's a lot. We're talking three minutes. That's uh, six a minute. All That's right. every 10 seconds. Okay. 
Every 10 seconds we're talking. <laughs> That's a lot. I'm not, I'm not joking. I it know. was literally like, I don't want to say the N word. I don't want to ruffle feathers. So I'll say, uh, what should I say? Uh, uh, shin n- pad. Nabisco. Nabisco. That's too close. I don't want to. That's too close? It's N. All right, all right, all right. I like shin pad. Shin pad, fine. <laughs> so he goes, uh, hey, boy, you see that shin pad with that girl? And the guy's like, what shin pad? And he's like, the white girl with the shin pad. Uh-huh. And he's like, that shin pad. He's got to go to soccer practice with both shin pads. Yeah. He, say, he just kept saying shin pad. Right. A ton. It's out there. And I'd like to talk to maybe, maybe Jeffrey Joseph, some people. What, where are these people, the black people, where are you standing on this? Mm-hmm. I mean, I know it's... It's still a curse word. It's, it's it's like saying fuck, 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 fuck. You're still on the train. You're still in public. Yeah, and, uh, you know, you're trying to... It's it's different than the effort because you're trying to, you know, make progress and and you try uh-huh. to rid the world of this word to some degree it, it's just and it's a crowded train also right it's just nothing but shin pads flying and there's a 70 year old woman over there there's a 55 year old black guy over there i'm very i don't like that kind of uh i don't like shin pads they make your legs sticky you know well i think you're uh you're looking at it in the wrong light okay tell me well i think uh you're saying you know, uh, it's a horrible word. It's an offensive word, which it is, but not from a black guy's mouth. I if guess it, not. I'm, but I'm saying it for, for it, them. It's just a, it's like a, just a colloquialism, whatever the hell that is. What do you call that? Is that what, the right word? That's what you wear. I thought a, that's a cloak. Colloquialism. Clock, Clock, cloak. Cloak Colloquial. Gosh, it's a hard word to get out. Yeah, it reminds me of the Mac Weldon word. What's that one? Oh, microbicrobial? Micro, micro, microbial. Wait, colloquial. Ah, fuck. <laughs> Colloquialisms. Colloquialism. What is it, Shelby? He can't do it either. Colloquialism. Colloquialism. Oh. Colloquialism. Now that's somebody oh, that boy. fucks men and women. Yes. Um, I think. But I, I just think it's like, it's outrageous. You're like, man, where, where'd you learn how to talk like that? Non-stop. Right. Yeah. Shin pad, shin pad, shin pad. I know. Well, I mean, we can get into it, but I don't. We, but we, we need we need other. Pers- we, need, we, we need a black. We need guy black here. perspective or a black woman. Yeah, or yeah, a trans. A trans black, just black anything. Yeah, black trans am. Yeah, a person with a black eye would do. But uh, yeah. Anyways, right. then so then I leave that and I think that's kooky. I want to. I'll have to get to the bottom of that. And then I go to Starbucks as I like to because I'm a real corporate cunt and uh, uh-huh. I love my tea. I just love it. I go there. I love it. They're friendly. We have a fan over there. He gives me a free tea. What? Yeah, and he's uh he's some kind of non-white person. Interesting. Latino maybe or uh maybe he's it's tough to what say. He is. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a Samoan out there, this Pacific Islander, whatever the hell that is. Yeah, I'm not good at it. I don't understand how people like New Yorkers are so good. Like you'll be like, look, that's an Afghani guy. He's Pakistani, a piece of shit. I'm like, yeah. how did you do that? I don't I know. understand. Dominican was a big one too. That guy's Dominican. I was like, shit, I've been calling him black for thirteen years. Yeah, I don't understand how they decipher. Mm-hmm. But I've talked about this before. I think we've talked about it. If you get that wrong, you're very wise. I mean, if you get that right, you're very wise. If you get it wrong, you're racist. Yeah, it's interesting. so fascinating. Well, the, yeah. If I go, hey, wait, you're Korean, they go, no, I'm Chinese. But if I go, hey, you're Korean, they go, yes. Wow, yes, look right, at you. I'm right. like, say both guesses, one uh-huh. right guess, you're very wise of the world. Yes. What happened to, remember your teacher would say, you go, I got a question, but it's, and she goes, no stupid questions. Well, yes. asking a guy if he's Korean is apparently a stupid question. From my uh, experience. It is, yes. Good but what? Experience. Just trying to learn. Now I'll know what the hell a Korean looks like. Mm-hmm. But I just feel like that word racist gets thrown around so much that it's not even a thing anymore. You go, oh, he's racist. Oh, how about that? You used to be like, holy shit, that guy's racist. Right. It's crazy. And now and I know we're two white guys, and there's people listening to this on the edge of their seat going, oh, what are they doing? Well, what the fuck? It's people. We're all people. There's people of different races. We're discussing it. Why does it have to be? Why does it have to have this evil connotation behind it? Everybody's like, "Here it comes!" Oh god, their assholes are getting tight. Ah, they're queefing. Ah, who cares? We're talking about it. Doesn't mean we hate them. It doesn't mean there's a, a, any prejudice or racism here. We're just talking about it. We're just talking. Now, how'd you know I was queefing? I can smell it. Ah, can you smell a queef? Oh, you can smell a queef. Okay, you must be able because it's the inside of a pussy, right? Yeah, it's like a cave having a you know a sneeze. Yeah, it's a cave sneeze. Cave sneeze. I was gonna say a cave burp, but cave sneeze is better because it's the moisture. Aha! Uh-huh. But I don't know if a queef has moisture. Does it? Does it spit? No, nah, but I'm sure this. It's like an exhaust pipe. There's a couple of drips coming out. Oh, interesting. <laughs> exhaust pipe. Well, the, the ladies aren't gonna like that. Well, your pussy's an exhaust pipe. <laughs> yeah, it is. But I want to put my banana in it. I think more. Uh, you fell for the. Not gonna fall for the banana in the tailpipe. Remember? 
Oh, what's that from? Beverly Hills Cop. That's right. <laughs> You're not going to fall for the belly of the tailpipe. <laughs> That's a classic. Um, anyway, so then I get, I go to my Starbucks, and then I run into a real first-class quacky kook. Oh, yeah. This is a real banana tree. Yes, a quacky kooky Jew. Mm-hmm. And uh, she comes out, and I'm standing in line, and I feel a, I feel a, a thing on my leg, a little... Uh, not a shin pad, but like a, a touch to the leg. A little. Whoa. Ooh. <laughs> you felt a little black person? No, no. I'm, oh, I'm using oh. shin pad in regular terms oh, now. Oh, okay. All right. Shin I, pad has a lot of meanings. I didn't out know there. we'd gone back. Yeah, it's the okay. N word. It's But shin pad is short for the N word. You got can't it. just be like, uh, boy, uh, you get it. I got uh, it. But, uh, but anyway. <laughs> I don't know if it's short for because it's the same syllables, but I got you. Yeah, it's a uh, code. Code. Um, so um, anyway, so she, I, I feel a, I feel a brush in the leg. I feel a touch, and I move, and I kind of do a look back, like, "What are you doing?" She goes, "Oh my god, I'm sorry. Was that? Did I touch you?" It's her suitcase. She's like, "Did I hit you?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, it's no problem." And then I turned back around. She's like, "Yeah, it is no problem." And I was like, "What? I thought Whoa. she was gonna fight me." And uh, but no, that was just pleasant words. She's like, "I'll tell you what's a the problem: these terrorist attacks." Uh huh. And I was like, "Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, terrorist attacks is a problem." <laughs> Boy, she really segued into that, huh? Really jumped the cunt here. She goes, uh, "Yeah, so it's uh, terrorism," and I'm like, "Yeah, terrorism." She's like, "Scary." She's like, "It's horrifying." She's like, "You don't even get half of it. You're like, it's really scary out there because there's no security, and we got a real problem on our hands." And I'm next in line. Yeah. And she's like, I mean, this is cra- I can't even live my life. Anywhere you go, you could be victim of these Islamic terrorists. And I'm like, okay, well, yeah. And then I hear the lady go, what, uh, what can I get started for you? So I'm like, I'll have a jade citrus. And as I'm ordering my jade citrus mint, she's like, we got to go over there and just bomb all of them. She's like, we got to kill all of them wow. so we can live in peace. Uh-huh. Which you pointed out the irony. Yes. Kill all of them so we can live in peace. Sure. And then she started ranting. I'm like, I'm like, okay, great. And they're making my tea. And she's like, but you don't understand. She's like, no one understands. I'm literally, she's, this is a quote, I'm literally the only one that gets it. Which Whoa. We talked about it on the way here. There's something like six billion people on the planet. You're not the only one anything. No, no. That's a red flag out of the gate. Yes. If you're saying I'm the only one that understands this thing, you're incorrect. Yes. Either you're an idiot and you're not right about your thing or tons of other people understand the thing you're talking about yeah the only thing she's the only one is she's the only one who thinks she's sane that's yes. about it right but anyways yeah she's like we got to kill all of them and uh which she didn't really specify them she just said we got to go over there and kill all of them i assume she means muslims yes or uh, i don't know if it's brown people in general but sounds like a middle eastern thing and then she said, uh, Europe is it's unsafe. You can't go to Europe. Don't ever go to Europe. She's like, they'll just look you in the eyes and they'll just kill you. And I'm like, okay. And then she's like, Israel is the only place with security. She's like, I'll go to Israel, but that's it. Yeah. And uh, Well, the thing with the uh, these, what is it? Is it a Muslim extremist? Is that what we're calling it? Islamic or Muslim? Islamic. I think it's the both. Okay. The same. I mean, uh, I think a lot of, a lot of uh, I don't know what the hell the word is, because I don't want to just lump innocent people in with bad people, but a lot of people hate us. For sure. Certainly. Yeah, a lot of people you hate us. You and I specifically. Yeah, that's true. Good Lord. You should see our mailbox. But yeah, a lot of people hate America and hate gays and hate anybody breaking the religious code and all that shit. So a lot of people do want to kill us. That is a thing. Oh, certainly, yeah. So I think people are worried and people are freaked out. But now we have this thing where we can't judge and we can't point fingers and profile you know, like, isn't it weird that you heard all this stuff about the guy? He had, like, a, a FBI record about being a terrorist, and yet he still bought a gun and all that. Like, all that shit's weird. Yeah. You know, if this guy's on the terrorist, he should be, you know, uh, monitored all the time. Yeah, it's tricky, but uh, they want those guns to be accessible. It's, it's good money. Yeah, is that what it is, the money? I think. It's a big business. All right. You know, uh, gun sales go way up after a, a mass shooting. Oh, you don't have to tell me, sister. Uh-huh. I know. Yeah, because they're all... they. You know, I don't. I don't want to get into a whole gun thing because I spent my days on right, Facebook right, right. D- doing this, and it's a it's a whole thing. And then I got to deal with more. If we talk about that, more people are gonna email, and it's a whole fucking kaboo, yeah, yeah. kaboobly boop boops. Well, you're still coming with me later to get my gun, right? Oh yeah, all I'll right. Put out a nice shiny one mm. for you. You can carry it around in your hip. Yeah, shoot but, from the hip. Uh, what does that mean? Shoot from the hip. That means uh, just quick without thinking. You just grab and go. Ah, uh, you just you just say something. I like that. Shoot from the hip. Um, yikes. What, you got a bad 
gun text? I got an odd text. I can't check. I got to just stop because Don't I, check. I got, it was too much yesterday. Don't check. But yeah. uh, boy, it's fun when you can really dismantle someone in an argument. Yeah. Just making real bad. I was uh, debating with a guy, and I won't say his name, but he put up a. First, he did the thing. Well, if, if there had been a gun at that club, it, there would have been less people. And I was like, well, there was an armed guy, like a security yeah. guy who had a gun. And he's like, where'd you read that? And I sent him like three. I'm like, it's, that's facts. And then he just never addresses that again. Yeah. So I'm like, just address that like, oh, I said a thing, and then you disproved me. I'm full of shit. Just, just say that. I just yeah. want someone to go, oh, yeah, that's crazy. Sorry. Right. You're right. Good point. Uh, you, takes, you nailed me. Takes a big man to do and that. And then at one point, he posted a chart. He's like, well, suck on this, pal. And it was a chart, and he's just made a, a fuck up. The chart was arguing in my favor. The whole chart just said less guns equals less murder. Yeah. Except for Russia. But like every other example, and I had to keep reading it to be like, surely he didn't post a thing that's arguing my side. Mm-hmm. But he did. And I was Whoa. like, hey man, like this is this chart. I don't know what you're doing here. You're yeah. terrible at this. Yeah. And then he doesn't address that. That's just ah. over. And I'm like, what the? What? You gotta. And then he started copying and pasting uh, comments from other articles. Like he's like, look what this guy says. And just like regular internet people, he's copying. I'm like, that's the weakest thing I've ever heard. You're just taking other. People you don't know's comments about a different thing and yeah. I'm like you are getting annihilated in this uh-huh. debate. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, we should get to stories. Well, you see, I just want to say these fuck because I get all these. I get a ton of. I do opium gym all the time, and I get a ton of these tweets from these guys. This story's fake. You're full of shit. That can't happen because of this. Fuck you. You stole that. It's like, hey, hey, blow me, kids at home. Listen to your shit, and then move on. Don't don't send me all your fucking every gripe you got. Yeah, no gripes. I'm sick of the gripes. Live your lives. What right. are you doing? Jesus Christ. Go yeah. out there. Take a hike. But yeah, the, yeah, I, I don't want to get into it either, but I told a story and everybody's like, that's a Tucker Mac story. It's a Tucker Mac story. I don't I don't listen to Tucker Max. I don't read his shit. He, he's a douche if you ask me. I've had sex with about 800 women. Maybe we might have a similar story. Has that ever crossed your mind? And also, I listen to his. It's completely different than mine. And that's mm. one thing in common. Right. And they, they just love doing it because they're like, oh, you, you stole it, you stole it. We got a fight going. We got some heat going. Ah, we got something. Oh, fuck you. You're, you're empty. You have boring lives. That's, that's what they, they, yeah, they need a little something. And then I think people like to take someone down. That's what it is. They like to go. They like to come after someone and be like, you're not so special. Yeah. You're not so great. Running around getting laid, doing your shows, yes. your piece of shit. What a sad quality in somebody. I want to take you down. Some guy I don't know. That's it? It's... Like, Go take somebody down who's, who's killing people or raping people or do, doing something bad. Why are you taking me down or him down? But Americans love it. Steph Curry, you heard it here ah. first. Mark my words. They're going to hate him. Give two or three years. Steph Curry, they'll be like, You're he's right. a piece of shit. You're right. He's little. Oh, it's already happening. People are like, <laughs> all he can do is shoot. He can just throw it up there. He just sh- shows these three-pointers. Let's make it a three-point cut. It's yeah. like, give him a few years. Just kidding. You're right. You're right. I mean, the day before the gun thing, the Orlando thing, I was in all these LeBron arguments. People want to hate LeBron. They're like, he's a piece of shit. Fuck him. Oh, yeah. He's getting a lot of hate. He's lost five championships in a row. And I'm like, he's made it to six championships yes. in a row. How about he, that? Like, he's a loser. I'm like, well, what about all the other winning, you fucking idiots? I know, you're I You're fucking know. idiots. If yeah. you enjoy, just enjoy. Just enjoy. A great basketball player. Thank you. Why do you got to be like, he's, he's trash. He missed this shot. He's this. Th-. No, he's great. Right. These people are like, he's not one of the greats. People keep saying, I've been all these arguments. He's not one of the greats. And then I'm like, is there 20 players you'd take over him in an all-time draft? Well, no, not 20, but there's 15. I'm like, yeah. so you're saying he's 31 years old, still active, and in the top 20 people that have ever played basketball. That includes you, me, Kramer, the butler. Yeah. 20, he's all-time <laughs> top 20, but you're not going to call him one of the greats? That doesn't qualify as one of the greats? I know, I know. What more do you people want? It's it's bananas, it's boobly boops, it's bippity bips. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and look, it's human nature. and I've, We've all had these thoughts. I, I sometimes, I've been doing comedy about 10 years. I see a new kid come up, he's amazing. My first thought is, ah, oh, shit, who's this kid? i got to bury him. Fuck him. i got to work hard. Ah! And then I go, ah, what are you doing? This yeah. kid's great at comedy. I love comedy. I like good comedy. Finally, somebody who's good at it, there's so many bad hacks out there. Now I go up to him, I go, that was fucking great. And yes. he goes, hey, thank you, person who's been on TV. And I go, you're welcome. And then we make out. And that's it. He should really learn your name. Well, you know, not that famous. But uh, how about this? I have a similar thing. The, the sociology, Colloquialism? Yeah. Colloquialism. Shit. Psychology of it is weird. I'll see someone walking down the street smiling, and it makes me, it brings me joy. I'm like, oh, boy, look at them having yeah. But 
Before I have that joy, there's a second where I'm like, I'd like to run up and just punch them in their dumb, smiley face. I, have, I get that every now and then. And I yeah. have to suppress that and yes. then be like, ah, get joy from them. I'm like, what the, what's going on there? Yes. Our wires are crossed. But then there's people whose wires are really crossed where they're like, I'm going to fucking get a gun and blow all those people away. Yeah, yeah, that's And that's extreme. real weird. And then they walk in and buy a fucking machine gun! But it is odd. I was at the airport the other day, and these three girls, I don't know, they were like 11, and they were like giggling and doing girly stuff, hitting each other with pillows and panties. Hey, combined, they're 33. Hey, I'll take it. All right, that was weird, sorry. So uh, these girls are doing, just goofing around horseplay, and they had a fun thing going where one would stand up and one would jump on her back, like a piggyback, and then the third one would jump on her back. What? It was cool. They were like a gymnast kind of thing. Wow, it's like Cirque du Soleil. Yeah, yeah. So, uh... I was watching it, and I was like, oh, that's fucking great. I love They were giggling, they were laughing, their friend was taking pictures of them while they had the three people on the back, and I was loving it. And this guy next to me goes, can you believe this shit? Jesus fucking Christ. And I was like, how are you upset about this? Right. How is this a bad thing? And that, that's the problem. Somehow it always goes negative. Now, was it on the train or somewhere? It was in the airport. Oh, the airport. It was no big deal. It was a cute thing. Yeah, the cute. I love it. I, 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 I get joy out of it. It's like, ah, oh, people are having fun still. People are laughing. It's great. We have joy. We have fun. We have seasons, seasons in, in the, the sun. sun. But our pants are too small, so our dicks hurt our leg. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I have the live version, so I have uh -huh. different lyrics in the I gotta, live. I got to borrow that version. All right. But yeah, let's just. We, I feel like we're a positive pod, and we've gone a little. Got a little sour and salty there, so let's sweeten. We're positive. Yes. Hi, folks. What a day it's been. Beautiful day. I, I had one of those great mornings. I've had a yeast infection the last couple weeks. What? Yeah, it's my third one I've had in my life. It's called jock itch for a male, but I still call oh, it yeast infection. Oh, wow. It's up in your exhaust pipe. I was hooking up with a gal in a hot tub, and I think that's what did it. Uh-huh. Yeah, those hot tubs, it's a, just a bubbling bacteria bath. Yeah, it's not good for their exhaust pipe, because I think it gets too much moisture and it bubbles. <laughs> yeah, you got to queef that shit out, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> it goes right up the cave. Now, let me ask you this. Was it a hot tub time machine? <laughs> I wish. Yeah. That would have been fun. I could have gone back and not gotten in it. I'll tell you what you could do. You could go to the future a few years and fuck those three gymnasts at the airport. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, they could stack up. Yeah, scoot up four or five years and get busy. Now we're talking. All right. I got to stop making these uh, pedophilia jokes, I guess. No, do it. But you never know. Things get serious. I'll be on the front page. Joe thinks it's okay to fuck 15-year-olds. You don't? Uh, no, but it's interesting because... Oh, here's something we could talk about. This oh, is another boy. controversial. All Muhammad right. Ali. You know... He fucked, uh, like, uh, he had like a 17 year old wife. He was fucking yeah. all these young girls and stuff. Yeah. Can I just say this? And we, I, this we is gonna, pick and choose what we want to be offended by. We're going to be really stirring the pot here with this episode. Stir but, it. Um, Muhammad Ali, uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a fan. I love him. And, uh, well, whatever. I don't. I don't know why I'm saying that. He's whatever. But, like, a lot of these people, they, they, they don't know the whole story. A lot about him. They praise it. It's like Muhammad Ali died. And I'm not trashing a, a dead guy here. And I, I love what he did with the uh, Vietnam and, uh, you know, stood up against the war. And he, and he cashed in three years in his prime and lost all that money and time for what he believes in, which is amazing. I do I respect him and love him for that. But there are things, I'm just pointing out the hypocrisy, there are things that he did that people would be outraged by. Like, for instance, he was a huge womanizer. Huge. Well, huge. Yeah, so like, was MLK, by the way. Talking about fucking six girls in a day. Wow. Cheating all over, all over all his wives. Like, if that happened now, people would be like, this guy's a piece of shit. Right. He's fucking everyone. It would be all over the news yes. and the Twitter. And then, um, also, he ruined fucking Joe Frazier's life. How so? And Joe Frazier... Like, lent him money, was his friend. He convinced everyone that Joe Frazier was an Uncle Tom, and he wasn't, like, truly black. Meanwhile, Joe Frazier's like, first of all, just complexion much darker than Muhammad Ali, for yeah. whatever that's worth. Uh -huh. And then also was, like, a fucking Project South Philly kid. Like, he had no money. Muhammad Ali had a pretty good upbringing. Kentucky. He had a little bit of money, and, and he was backed by, he had a white trainer, a right. white manager. He was really backed by uh, white people. Yeah. Joe Frazier, all black gym, all black manager, and... Uh, just like a poor street guy, and they, they call him a gorilla. Really? Can you imagine now an athlete womanizing and calling someone a gorilla, holding a gorilla thing and punching it? Yeah, and what is the anti... Why is he not black? I don't get it. Why is he an Uncle he Tom? He just wanted to sell tickets. Uh -huh. And this is his friend. Yeah. He just turned on his friend and be like, I just started saying, you know, Mark's a closeted 
gay or whatever. <laughs> he's, a, he's a piece of shit. He's uh-huh. a gorilla. He's a whatever the fuck. Well, I'm out now. Not to compare closeted gay to Uncle Tom, whatever. I don't know what the hell is going on. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, really fucked up his, his, totally his fucked life up. Yeah. And, and, and turned his back on a, a friend that had really helped him. And also, uh, Pierce Morgan was talking about this. This is Pierce Morgan's quote. Like, Muhammad Ali said worse stuff about white people than Donald Trump has ever said about Muslims. Oh, Like, he was, like, openly, like, fucking, you know, trash it. So he said a lot of racist stuff himself. Right. And he was, he was a womanizer and uh, just ruined this guy, his friend's fucking whole thing. Had everyone turning on him just, yeah. just to sell tickets, I guess. Wow. I just think it's worth... Pointing out that I he was a it. flawed guy, and I these, these things also happened. Point it out, baby. As much as I do respect that, uh, it's amazing that he gave up fucking three years of his career. Sure, and said, uh, you know, fuck and, you. And he was big on some civil rights. Like I watched that Billy Crystal eulogy, which you should watch. It's like ten minutes. It's a hell of a speech. I will. But uh, he said that they were such buddies that they would go jogging at, at Muhammad Ali's uh, country club. It was like the nicest country club. And he's like, yeah. I don't know. He met him there for something. I don't know why. He's like, hey, you should know that they don't let Jews in here. And Muhammad Ali's like, what? And he quit the next day. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, good for him. So there was stuff like that, but uh, that Joe Frazier thing's insane. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff like that. And um, also, the uh, I read an article. There's a great article by Robert Lipsight uh, in Time Magazine. Great writer. Mm. Just about uh, a lot of stuff that was kind of attributed to him that he didn't really say or really even do. Um, but anyways... Wait, wait, what was what did he say? Like a lot of the like the oh, poems okay. and stuff. Like he wasn't uh, actually writing these poems. Uh-huh. Like the float, like a butterfly sting, like a bee. Your head gets hit, hit, what your eyes can't see. Right. Take them down. Like they, he had writers for all. Oh of those wow! How about things. that? But uh, you know, yeah. How about that? I love, I love breaking it all down. I mean, MLK was a big womanizer. He cheated a lot. And uh, what's his face? Charlie Chaplin loved the kids. He did a lot of kid fucking. Oh really? Yeah. Well, big back kid. back then, everyone was just married and fucking kids. I yeah. think Jack Nicholson was fucking a seventeen really? year old at one point. Back in like the seventies and and earlier, everyone was fucking teenagers. Well, we like the unknown. We just assume, oh, he's great, he's great. But the, everybody's done fucked up shit. I put my dick in a in a weird like toaster and shit. We've all done crazy stuff. There's a lot of stuff that's weird because it's just that was just socially acceptable then. You're, yeah, you're a fucking a seventeen year old. People went, okay, great, right? Well, he's a star. He can do what he wants. I mean, I'm fucking uh, Frank Sinatra. He killed a bunch of people. He slapped women around. I mean, come on, it was that's the times. I'm not sure he killed a bunch of people. Oh, he had people killed oh he had people killed i don't mean he's shooting people in the head but i mean he's like kill that guy oh i I never heard that story google it or not (laughs) don't google uh but he was in the he was mob ties and all that yeah he was an entertainer for the mob but there's stuff there's like a thing there's another thing that happened recently boy this is just a fucking there's no stories happening here i got stories but i I feel like i was letting us run we're running here i got a couple too but this is gonna be very controversial we're gonna throw some fucking dick jokes in here all right well i got herpes i fucked a toaster a second ago uh um what was i gonna say oh like uh this is another thing like ah, i don't want to get into that That one's stupid all right forget that one all right it's a whole thing with another thing don't fuck toasters kids but anyways let's oh how about this good segue here uh-huh i was in louisville when ali died whoa i was in his hometown isn't that crazy holy hell of all the places of all the gyms in all the world all the gin joints yeah gin i, th- I think gym because of boxing gym works i was uh i was in louisville when he when he died when i landed they said he went to the hospital for respiratory illness and i was like well he's gonna probably gonna die yeah. usually a guy that's old a lot of health problems they say he's been hospitalized you're like well this is probably it wow and uh, he died uh, late friday night early saturday morning and uh, i was in louisville which was pretty interesting and neat and uh Boy, hell of a time in Louis- Louisville. is now one of my favorite cities. Great city. It really uh, got hip. Yes, super the, hip. The kids cleaned it up. Yeah, it's a great city. I really loved it. A lot of record stores. Yeah. I, I bought a mandolin. Another one? No, with you. Oh, oh that's a different been, story, uh, I guess. I like in Louisville. We'll get into the mandolin, too. Yeah, this kid bought a mandolin. Can you believe that, folks? He's well, a sober adult. With Mark. Yes. But uh, anyway, so I was in Louisville, and I went. I took the I took the kids to the ball game. Yeah, you did. There was a baseball, college baseball playoff between uh, playoffs, uh, Wright State and Ohio State and uh, Louisville, and I took them. I took the uh, op- the MC uh, Dan Sabri, uh-huh. who left me. Uh, didn't uh, take me to the airport that time. Oh, oh that's the culprit. Oh, uh, jeez, sorry, I ruined it. Oh, I made him anonymous, anonymous, colloquialism, anonymous before colloquialism, and now all of a sudden the name comes out. Now I feel bad. Oh, jeez, uh, I didn't say his name properly. It's Dan 
Sabrini Peeny Teeny yeah. Dick. Sabri Sun. Hard not, to open. Not to be confused with Dan Sebri, the comedian. Uh-huh. This was uh, Dan Sabrini Teeny Dick. Yes. That uh, fucked me up in my airport. But anyways. Or Seabreeze, the convertible, and the drink. Anyways, great to see my old pal, Danny Boy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then there was a guy named Nathan Gropp. Ah, wow. Horrible name there. Groppy. Really? Well, you should see the act. Woo! <laughs> I'm kidding. Nathan, I'm kidding. He's a listener. Woo! He's got, he's got great, uh, great jokes. Anyways. He's a bad Gropp act. What's that mean? Oh, prop. There we go. I wasn't sure of the pun, but I, I got to the bottom you of it. You got it. Shin pad. Uh, anyways, oh it was boy. Shin me, pad, please. Me and, and Groppy Poo. It was funny, by the way. I was only kidding, of course. And uh, Dan Seabree. And then Lindsay Bowling. You know Lindsay? I heard. I keep hearing this fucking name. Well, she's uh, she was she's from Louisville, and she's here now. Yeah, and uh, she's gonna do your show, hot soup. Doing hot soup. I put in a I put in a word. As hot, a hot word. A wreck off the big list. Yes, <laughs> wreck off the big list. <laughs> Ooh, that's a fun <laughs> sentence. Anyway, she was a t- but I took him to the ball game. I like to be a good headliner who takes everyone out. I say, hey, I'll I get like the that. tickets to the ball game. That's lunch and uh, <laughs> biscuits too. Hey, the ticket was only fifteen bucks. So I spent sixty bucks. Not so bad. Not They're bad. making no money. Dan Seber. I don't even want to say what Dan was getting paid. It's they just they fuck these comedians yeah, on the road. That's, I've been there. It's rough. Yeah, I've been there for years and years, more years than I'd like to admit, folks. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I send sixty bucks, and then you're sitting there. There's part of you when you're watching the game. Great ball game. I'm going. What am I doing? Spending sixty. bucks? I'm crazy. What, the, what am I doing? Am uh, I, yeah, I know. I'm an mean. idiot. So, anyways, we watched the game. Classic game. A guy steals home at one point. Ooh. They called him out, but he was safe. And Ohio State has a big comeback in the ninth. They win in the last at bat. It's crazy. It's a wow. wild game. Unbelievable game. Ohio State floods out. They're celebrating at second base after the walk off hit. I get a text from my mother. I look down. It's a photo of a check. 60 bucks! Whoa! You're even Steven! She goes, yeah, we got a check from uh, audible.douche. Yes. 60 bucks! I broke even! Ooh-ah. You see? You put this money out there, it comes back to you. Socialism, wow. everybody. Wow! And you had a great experience. A uh, great experience. We had fun. We had joy. We had fun. We had... Seasons we, in the sun. Yeah, we ate hot dogs and uh, put them in our assholes. Now, who's paying for the hot dogs? That's what I want to know. I paid for my own pizza, but then one of them got me uh, like a Chipotle at one point. Oh. It's one of those things where Dan, he's a sweet, sweet heart of a man. He, he bought Chipotle. He's like, I got your Chipotle. I'm like, no, you don't get me Chipotle. I get I'm you Chipotle. I'm buying you meals yes. because you're getting fucked. Uh, I'm not getting fucked. You are getting fucked. Is that what it is? I mean, it's very sweet, but you're just like, no, I have the money. You don't. Right. That's why I'm buying. Yes. You buy years down the road. But... Very sweet man. We, yeah. well, we had fun. We went to the, we went to some record shop. We listened to some music. It was real. He's got a real comedian car. The whole the dashboard's fucking missing. The yeah. volume knob fell off. The window doesn't go up. The oh, engine yeah. smokes. Uh-huh. It's like that gig. He's like, I drove nine hours here. He slept in his car. There's I no stereo. It. He's got like a weird little vibrator dick speaker. It doesn't, I don't uh, even know how it works. Uh-huh. It's real shitty. You got to hold it to your ear if you want to play it loud. Like a jam box? Yes, it's a jam box. Uh-huh. But you turn it up by moving it closer to your earlobe. Uh-huh. It's uh, uh, it's real fun. Anyways, we had a great time. Yo, yo. So we had to tell you about books.com. B-O-U-Q-S dot com. It's the flower site that every guy needs. We all screw up. Men are stupid. Yada, yada, yada. You've seen the commercials. Uh, we pour... Orange juice into a toaster because we can't make breakfast when mom's out of town. But hey, we do screw up and, uh, you know, you want to please your lady. How about just getting her flowers for the heck of it? But don't tell her how easy it is. Women want it to be hard for you guys. So uh, get on books.com and get a few of these puppies. They're the best in the biz. They're growing on the side of a volcano. They're more vibrant, better colors, and... Books prices start at a mere 40 bucks. There are no upcharges, no extra fees. Back when I was banging, flowers were, you know, 200 bucks a pop. Or you could steal them from the grave, but uh, that gets a little dusty. Delivery is free as well when you register with Books. So get in there. Listeners to our show save 20% off the bouquet of your choice. Just go to Books.com and enter promo code STORIES. That's STORIES. That's B-O-U-Q-S dot com. Promo code STORIES. Books dot com. Promo code STORIES. Get some flowers for your lady and get lucky tonight. 
Hey, a great business needs a stunning website, and with Wix.com, you can do it all by yourself. Wix.com makes it easy to look amazing online. No matter what type of business you're in, show off your images in a beautiful gallery. Grow your contact list and get all your social media in one place, just the way you want. Your customers are going to love it. So what are you waiting for? Show the world what you can do. Go to Wix.com and create your stunning website today. It's easy and free. Hey guys, it's Jim Norton. I'm Bert Sarah! I made that up. Matt's not here. He's out hanging out with Dana while I'm in the fucking hot studio in New York. He's gallivanting. We're hosting the new UFC podcast, UFC Unfiltered. It's going to come out every Tuesday and Thursday. And pretty much we're going to be talking about the upcoming fights, the fights that have just passed, and interview fighters, get the exclusive on certain things. We're going to talk a lot of UFC, MMA in general, and a lot of other stuff, whatever we really feel like talking about. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever else podcasts are. I don't know where you get your podcast. It's not my business. Just tune in so Matt and I don't get fired. But enough about Louisville. Let's get to, uh, I assume you fucked 1,100 women. Oh, no, my God, no, I'm kidding. those days are over. Oh, those days are over, folks. Yeah, seeing somebody now. That's who the hot tub yeast was from. Oh, really? The hot tub, not her. Did she get yeah. infected as well? Yeah, we all got infected, the whole hotel. <laughs> Sounds like a bad tub you got there. <laughs> that tub needed a scrub. <laughs> uh, but how about this? So, uh... <laughs> It's just been a great day. I had one of those mornings today where you, I woke up. I had to be here. We had a 2 o'clock pod. So I said, all right, got to leave the house by 11, uh, one twenty. had that thing where I woke up at noon, and I said, ah, shit, I want to go to the gym. Mm -hmm. I'll never make it. Because, you know, you lay in bed for a hot 10 minutes. You can't. No one just springs out of bed. 10? I'm 30 minutes in All there. right. I, I wanted to lowball it. But, yeah, so I. I, I got low balls. All right. Yeah, me too. My, my left one's on the floor. But, yeah, so I was like, all right. I got I I got I do the gym for at least an hour, but that means if I get out of the, if I go now to the gym, I'll get out of the uh, the gym at one if I bust my ass, and then I gotta hop in the shower and be out of here. By, and I did it. I just fucking wow, wow. shot up and did it and went to the gym. I pumped it out. I got home. I was like, all right, I got twenty minutes. I jumped in the shower. Ten minutes because it's, it's so easy to sit down, and look at your phone, yes. look at your computer, and before you know it, it's been an hour and a half. Yes, God, it's so easy, especially when you're debating. Oh, these fucking empty vessels. So yeah, I uh, jumped in the shower. Then got in the shower. I picked up my fucking laundry. I brought it to the laundromat and then got on the train. I picked up laundry and went to the gym today. Whoa! We're living parallel lives. Wow! Look at that. I woke up. I sat in bed. I went to the gym. I sucked my own dick. I dropped off my laundry. I picked up my laundry. I only did one of those things. I picked it up. Ah. Uh -huh. I threw it in the satchel and uh, zipped up here. Now, what time did you wake up? Ooh boy, maybe quarter of eleven or so. One okay, of those in okay. that area. I try to get up by eleven. I try to go to. This is what my ideal is: go to bed at two, wake up at ten, ten thirty. I like that. But Sarah, she's a bit of a night hawk owl woman. Yes. So she likes to stay up late. Sometimes we chit and chat. We just sometimes you just can't stop chitting and chatting. There's a oh. lot of people in this comedy scene that you need to trash before you go to bed. Of course, and then you're, you're spooning and you start giggling. It's so fun that bedside manner. It's a good time. Yes, I love a good giggly spoon. Yeah, then you. Penis pops up and you pop it in. It's it's great. It's a real nice moment. I've never spooned once in my life without a rock hard dick. Never really. Happens. Yeah. What are you gonna do? I just got a rock hard dick jammed in between those ass cheeks. It fits so well. It's like a, a Frank Footer. Yes, very similar to Fenway Frank, if yeah, you will. What do you call that? A Hebrew National. Yes, I met one of those earlier at Starbucks. She wants to bomb all the muzzies. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. Got a, I had a hot gig this weekend over at Rooster Tea Feathers. I got to give a shout out to Johnny Barry. This kid came out, brought some uh, friends, and wrote, wrote me a nice note. I sent it to you. You did? I, I, I texted you the, a picture of the note. I can't remember. Oh, well, that, that stings a little. But uh, yeah, it was a nice note. I think I have it on me. But uh, yeah, he's a huge fan of the pod, and he brought friends out, and great guy. And uh, I had a real weekend there. I was like, I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to philander. I'm just going to eat Chipotle, get some sun, and do some work. I'm working on a TV show with you. I'm working on a roast packet. I'm working on my own stuff, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, I'm going to have a nice rehab weekend. And Rehabilitate. Yes. And Sunnyvale's the place to do it. There's yes. nothing to do. It's a boring-ass town. I'm sorry. You know it's true. And uh, you got a nice pool there. You got a nice facility and the whole nine. There's a pool there? Ooh, is there a pool? Oh, I was there in... Uh... September, so it's not pooly, maybe. Uh, Why didn't I go in the pool? I, the pool's right in the middle of the complex. Maybe I went to the pool. I can't remember. Oh, oh I know why. I had friends there. Uh -huh. I went to a different pool. 
All right, so I got to get on a, a flight to San Jose. My flight, how about this? My flight's at 11.10 a.m. Not mm-hmm. a bad flight. Good time. You leave at 10 a.m., you get there at 11, you got your nice hour security, the whole thing. So I wake up pretty early. I wake up at like 8, and I go, all right, if I leave by 9, I'll get there by 10. And then I realize, oh, shit, it's rush hour. 9 o'clock is rush hour. Yes. And I always take a, an Uber. Yes. So I'm like, I can't do that. So I said, you know what? I got the whole hour. I'll train it. I'll take the train. What train? Sunnyvale the train. train. I'm talking, I'm going to the JFK. Oh, I thought you were in Sunnyvale. No, I'm going to Sunnyvale. Ah, I'm going gotcha. to JFK. This is the whole beginning of the journey. I thought the A train went to Sunnyvale now. Oh, God, I wish. That's a lot of track. Yeah. A lot of stops. By the way, the, the word journey never doesn't sound pretentious. I got to take a journey. Yeah. I went on a journey. I'll tell you, that band I'm not too keen on either. <laughs> well, yeah, they're not great. People <laughs> love them. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, I think people just think they, they're supposed to. Yeah. All right, so I go, fuck it, I'll take the train. It'll be a nice ride. I'll, it'll be cheap. I get on that A to Sunnyvale, baby. And uh, boom, train takes forever. We're stopping every stop. There's a bunch of like crackheads and hobos that get on in like the middle of nowhere, and they're like holding the doors like, oh, hang on. I got the big fucking shopping cart of Beanie Babies or whatever the hell that is. It's like dirty socks and cans. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God. So we just take a while. Then you get to the air train. And I don't know if anybody out there listening has been to the fucking JFK, but that air train is a, is, it's, it's like the train to Krakow. I thought it's it was worse. Air Tran. You might be right. I think it's Air Tran. Air Tran? Like, air Tran. Air, like, Sorry. It's short for air transgendered. Aha. Uh-huh. You know, it's, it's crazy? Huh. It's crazy? Oh, 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 question yeah. mark. I thought you were going to say, it's crazy. <laughs> oh, sorry, something. no, I was trying to set up your uh, business. The air train, Tran, sorry, Caitlin. The air train is fucking brutal. It takes forever to get there. You got to pay five bucks to get on it. It's a, it's a, it's a sacrilege. It's a crime. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm making good time, but now the air train takes 20 minutes. Then you get on, and then it goes to Federal Circle and Union Dick and I'm a homo and all this shit, and you finally get on... Orlando. You finally get on, and uh, it takes forever, and uh, it's brutal. I, I almost missed my flight, so I, I'm like, just you know when you're in a hurry and something's just creeping along? You yes. want to fucking kill yourself? You want to kill the conductor? You want to kill Allah? Whatever the hell. So I'm just freaking out. So I finally get to my gate. I just run out of there. I got a big duffel bag. I know you like the wheels. Still the duffel? I love a duff. Get rid of the duffel! I'm a fan. I'm a duff buff. You're making a million dollars a day. Buy a wheel, fucking leather, a nice thing. Can't do it. I'm not uh, getting checks from Audible.douche. The duffel. You look like a serial killer. What? I love a duff. Get out of here with the duff. I only need three shirts and four panties. What do you think I'm carrying? Oh, my God. Get some wheels. All right. So I'm running down, down a Delta. I'm running down a Delta. And I, I'm a big fan of the uh, the self kiosk where you just put the credit card in, you get your ticket, and you move. I hate the people that talk. I don't but want to talk to the desk. Why aren't you showing up with a ticket? Come again? Why don't you get the oh, app? You show up with a ticket. I got the you app. Kook. I got the app. How about this? My password isn't working. Oh my! It just God. randomly was like, "That's incorrect." I'm like, "I know my fucking password." But that's it's, incorrect. It says fucking redo password. I know, but I, I tried all that. It wouldn't work. There was a glitch. Oh, glitch in the cyst. These glitches. I hate a glitch. Oh, my dick is covered in glitches. Oh, and yeah. cysts. Mm-hmm. I'm about to slap a glitch. So I now I'm pissed. So I call Delta, which Uh-oh. is never good. So I'm like. Hey, you cunt, I'm Silver Medallion, which means nothing. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in gold status, whatever. My password's not working. So she goes, all right, we'll change it over the phone. And I changed it over the phone, and it, I put it in. It didn't work still. There was a glitch. Oh. So I called back. Oh, it's still not working. It's still not working. It finally worked. She's like, I'm going to override my asshole and suck my own cunt and all this. And it finally worked. She queefed into the phone. I don't know, but she got it to work. So now I go to the kiosk thing. And it says, see attendant. Oh, I've had that. Never a good sign. No, and there's a thousand people in line to exactly. see attendant. So I go, fuck this. I go in like the, I'm about to miss my flight here. The flight leaves at 1110. It's like 1030. Mm-hmm. And I'm still at the, you know, I haven't even gone through security yet. So I'm, uh, you know, it boards at like, what, 1050, I think. So I'm freaking out. And I go up to the lady. I finally get through the line. I go up and she's like, oh, my God, they gave your seat away. I was like, what? What do you give my seat away? She's like, well, you got to be in by 30 minutes. Blah, blah, blah. So I'm like pleading with her, like, come on, please, you whore. Please, you whore. And she goes, all right, here, take this thing. I got you back in. Take that. They can do anything at that desk. They, they're, they're all liars. Yeah, we've talked about it before. All right. If they want to, they can. you can fly the plane. Yes. They just got to go. They got to hit 614 star asterisk, and you're the pilot. Let me fly. I got wings. 
Maxi pad with wings. Let me contemplate. I glanced in the cut and I see my home, Nate. Yeah. So uh, I rushed through the line and I got a I got a nice uh, first class ticket. Woo. But here's the clinker. The first class ticket. I'm going to fly to San Jose, JFK to Salt Lake City, Salt Lake City to San Jose. Yes. Which is like an hour, mm -hmm. and that's my first class ticket. Yeah. So I go. Well, maybe I'll pull a nice uh, shake and bake, and I helped. And I go into the first class line, which is empty. And I walk through. I go, "Here's my first class ticket." And the lady goes, "Oh, wow, look at that!" And then I get up to the the the, the chick at the podium checking shit. Podium chick. And she goes, "Well, you're in the wrong line." Uh -oh. And I go, "Well, I've got a first class ticket, you crazy uh, nut." And she goes, "No, nah, no, nah, no, nah. that's the other airport. I need the JFK ticket." And I show her that. She goes, "This is no good. You got to get in line." I look at the line. It's eight miles long. Oh. Now it's a it's ten forty five, and I'm like, "I can't, I can't." She's like, "I don't know what to tell you." And I go. I'm, please, madam, I'll, I'll blow you, whatever you need. Let me lick your asshole. I'll, I'll do anything. She's like, I'm sorry. So I run back to the desk, and I go, you got to give me something. I can't get through that line. I'll never make it. She goes, I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. So I get in the line. I'm, I have to do the, hey, I got the my flight. Da, da, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm gay. I, please help me. I got to get forward. My child is dying. Uh, you know, Allah, all this shit. I'm freaking out. And they let me through. And oh, I got right up the there. The citizens. Citizens, good yeah, people. I yes. really did some finagling there. People like to help. I talked about that in Chicago. Yes. I never felt better than when I let a woman go ahead of me. Beautiful. And some people were like, yeah, I don't care. We're going nuts. And some yeah. people were kind of like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But a lot of people were like, yeah, I'm not an asshole. I got here three hours early. Go yeah. ahead, you piece of shit. Exactly. That's how I feel. I, I, you know what I think it is? It's nice to help, but it's also a nice moment to feel better than someone. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're late? Yeah, I'm not late. Right. You know, so why don't you go ahead? Because obviously you're yeah. a fucking retard that can't get your life together. But exactly. uh, I'm here nine days early because I'm good at things. So you go ahead. It's yeah. a fun way to condescend to somebody. It's fun. People love to do it. That's what a lot of that Twitter shit is. But yeah. how about this? So as I'm juking my way through the line, there's a woman. There's a fat chick with a bunch of tattoos. She's just crying her eyes out. She's like, but I'm not going to make it. And you tell me about it. And this poor attendant is like, look, I'm sorry. You got to get in line or something. And she was like. She it would like open my eyes. I was like, "Oh my god, I was I I was that." Yeah. Thank God I didn't flip out because everything in my brain is just like flip out. Just start complaining and whining, you big baby. But I didn't do it, and then I bumped into her, and I'm like, "I could have been that." Yeah. Thank God I kept my fucking mouth shut and just sucked it up. Right. So uh, she had to like she had to go. Uh, they flogged her in, a, in a, an office room somewhere. <laughs> but uh, I don't know what happened to her. But she had a dog. She was like the whole package. Like you're just a douche lady. You're a, a dog. You, you're a w wuss. You know. And uh, so I got through, and I run. I did the gate run. I get there. The guy's standing at the door, like about to close it. Yeah. And I, I'm like, I'm here, I'm here. And he goes, Well, you got to check that bag. I said, All right, whatever you got to do. I'm sorry. And uh, he did like the whole like on the on the microphone. He's like, We got one more. Hang tight. We got oh, one right. more. And I like, ran on. Everybody looks at me like, Oh, you barely made it, asshole. And I was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got in, and uh, that was it. Flew to San Jose, oh, to Salt Lake City. That's a beautiful airport. It's all mountains. Mountain yeah, it all was windowy, nice. Windowy mountainy. Yeah. It was nice. Then I got on the on the first class flight, and boy, that was a it was a game changer. Yeah, you done this first class yet? I think one time many moons ago. Ah, oh, it's so weird. They're so nice to you. It's like off putting. You're like, what? What do you want? Yeah. What's your What's your angle? Yeah. But yeah, I got to got to San Jose. Took a cab. Which fucking these cabs? They rape you. Ah, this is such a complainy episode. But I get to San Jose. And uh, I, they say, text the owner of the club right when you get there. And I don't want to shit on anybody, but I text her, and I go, hey, I'm in San Jose, just letting you know I'm here. And she goes, great, take an Uber, blah, 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 or a cab, blah, blah. Yeah. It, you could tell it was a copy and pasted that she sends every comic. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, whatever. So I, I grab an Uber. I get the Uber guy. He's like seven minutes away. All right, whatever. Nine minutes, 12 minutes. So I, eventually he calls me, goes, I can't find you. I'm like, I'm here. I'm at the fourth door on the departure at arrival side whatever and he goes i can't find it and now it's been like 20 minutes so i go fuck it i'm taking a cab get the cab 40 bucks but they give you the money i know but if i had taken an uber it would have been 10 ah so this uber guy screwed me and the cab screwed me too for i told him i was like this is highway robbery what are you doing to me here and he's like well you should have taken an uber i was like ah fuck you well it's too late for this now but if you go back next year what i do uh -huh. not to be the guy is how you do it you son of a gun but please uh, I'm that guy with the luggage. Definitely the wheels. You gotta get wheels. I don't like even a, know what you're doing. Like a duff. But, but here's a uh, thought. 
I like to fly in a day early, go to San Fran. Yeah. Cisco. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do a JetBlue San Fran. I watch TV the whole way. Uh-huh. And then you get a show, a local cool hip show in San Fran, the Bay Area. You walk around. You yeah. go to the Castro. You go to the Haight-Ashbury, the whole uh-huh. thing. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, you get yourself a car. You cruise right down. Two out. You drive past Google. You go through Stanford. And uh, bippity bip, boobily boop. Yeah, that's And then you get a car. Right. You can go to Chipotle. You go to Starbucks. You go to Mountain View. I know, but you know me. I feel first of all, you're renting a car. That's some dough. Yeah. Secondly, you're doing you're losing a, sh- a night in New York. That's some dough. Yep. So uh, I got all that guilt and uh, low self worth. I don't know if I can do that. Yeah, but you're losing the dough. But then you're spending the money on the cab. I that's the it. whole thing. I got the cab. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, you know the car. You can get a car for eighteen bucks a day or something crazy. Wow, like is that. it that cheap? Something like that. I don't know. But uh, just a thought. And then you All get right. some life enjoyment. Now you're cruising around. You're visiting towns. You're yeah, walking on yeah. campus. You're in San Fran. You're getting some culture. You might get a bit out of it. There you go. You never All know. Right. All right. Well, I do love San Fran. Here's what they do. A different lot of hobos. Different strokes for different folks. Aha. Uh-huh. I've heard that before. You know what I mean? Decent TV show as well. So Different folks? Yeah. So I get there. And uh, now I'm in Sunnyvale. I get my cab in. I'm, now I'm like, ah, huffing and puffing. And I go, fuck it, I'm going to the gym. Burn off some steam. Yeah. I walk to 24-hour fitness, which is about, ugh, I don't know, 25-minute walk. Everything out there is sprawling out there. It's fucking huge. You need a car out there. It's crazy. Yeah. I go to Planet Fitness. It's packed. It's like a fucking Thursday at, at whatever the hell. I don't know. How did you get to Planet Fitness? I walked. But like, how did you get in? Oh, you just go, hey, I want to do a day pass. Uh-huh. It's like 20 bucks. You're willing to pay the day pass. That's all I, I mean, that's all I got. I mean, you could do push-ups in your room. Nah, I got a routine. Okay. Yeah. So I get in there, it's packed. You ever have one of those moments where you're like, where the fuck, why are these people working? I'm the comedian. Right. I got the cool job. What are you guys, they're all tech startups and work from home and in laptop weirdos you got some work from homes yes so i get on there i'm, I'm busting i'm grinding it out grinding it out feeling better i do my uh, i do my uh, dumbbell lifts yeah where i lay on the bench and i got two dumbbells and i push them up yeah like so i don't know if this is re- registering over yeah, there yeah we the, get it all right the Marilyn monroe poster you ever see that one no you never saw that it's iconic what the the, the dress blowing up no, why would I bring up the dress blowing well, up? Well, that's the only poster I know. Yeah, but you didn't say dress blowing up. There's one with the dumbbells. She's I've doing never the seen workout it. you're talking. I've never seen it. Well, everyone this else knows what I'm talking about. She's got a bikini on. Pull up the bikini. You know this poster? No. Well, he's, a, he's 14 years old, this Every, kid. He said everyone else. You know what I mean by everyone else. Right. I'm talking about our listeners. They're very smart people. <laughs> I agree. But yeah, there's, a, there's one of her on a bench press with the dumbbells. I'm, you never jerked off to Marilyn Monroe as much as possible? I have, but I missed this one. What? He can't even find it. He's got, he pulled it right up. World you, Wide Web. No, that's not it. You see? She's laying down with dumbbells. Type in Marilyn Monroe dumbbells bikini. There's Is that one. It? That's not the iconic one. Oh, right. That's well. a different one. There's, there's multiples. <laughs> There it is. Can I get one in a the wallet? There it is. What do you got there? All right, I've never seen that in my life. That's a Marilyn Monroe dumbbell bikini. I'll jerk off to it later. Though. Yes, please do. I'd be happier. Well, that's the move I was doing. Jerk off into your duffel bag. And I was wearing the same thing, which is weird. <laughs> All right. But, uh. Was your dress blowing up? Uh, yeah. So. Your phone is. I'm on the fucking thing, and I. It's a tough move. I got 45s going. 45s? Sure. Yeah, I'm trying to do it here, what baby. What are you talking, LPs? Yeah. <laughs> LBs, LBs or LPs? LBs. Boy, that was a fun pun. Yeah. Uh, 45, and uh, yeah, I'm going for it here, fatty. And I go, I go one more up, and it was hard, and I something clicks. Oh, click. I pulled a goddamn hammy in my neck. I know what you do. You what? talk to Doug Key. Have you talked to Doug Key yet? I don't want to talk to Key. Talk to Doug Key. All right, I'll talk to Key. He's an excellent comedian and a hell of a physical therapist. He saved my ass, this he's a, guy. He's a great guy. What, yeah. what did he help you with? I hernia? pulled my testicles. I pulled everything. Yeah. Well. My hoof, my plantar fasciitis, my heels, my oh, eyeball. Oh, right, right, He gets right. right in there and just... Yeah. Don't talk to the Stefano. He's a quack. Oh, yeah? Yeah. He's, he's, he's too nervous to be a, a physical there. <laughs> he's a quack. Too much time has passed. But Key knows what he's doing. I told uh, Chris to say my toe hurt. He told me I had AIDS, cancer, and uh, 
Eucophilia. Let me tell you what, DeStefano, one time Steve Forrest, when he first moved here, we played hoop. He was living with Sarah. I was like, come on, we'll play basketball. He sprained his ankle. DeStefano's like, do this, this, and the other thing. Yeah. And uh, he did that, and the next day his leg was broken. It fell off. Yeah. He went to the doctor like, who's the piece of shit that told you to do Why? that? Why? Is that right? And he's like, Chris DeStefano, like, that guy's a terrible comedian. He's a worse physical he's, therapist. He's a quack, yeah. Yeah. He gives um, you bad advice. He told me I had Zika. I had a booger. <laughs> So, uh, by the way, one of my favorite comedian, piece, oh, of, piece of shit therapist, hilarious. But truly one of my favorite comics. I guess that's why I went into the the com biz. Yeah, past guest too. Yeah, check that, Mister Perfect. Great episode. Is so, that what it's called? Yeah. Oh, I remember that. He pretended uh, to be rich. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh boy. So, uh, you know, now I got a neck crick. So your, your neck goes. I mean, I pulled. It was some tendon. I don't know what the hell you called it. It was a hamstring, a string of some kind connecting my neck to my shoulder. So I can't even turn left. I'm this guy in the in the gym. Like, oh, I can't geez. turn left. I can't. T- it still hurts, but I'm, maybe I'm was, better. Maybe it's a beef string. Aha! Uh-huh. Not a hamstring, but a beef string. There you go. That's Hi, for folks. The, for the Jews out there. <laughs> can't touch that pork. So I uh, pulled this thing in my neck, and now you, you know you're just freaking out. Like, oh my god, can I perform? How's my day gonna be? Am I gonna be? In a, do I need a fucking neck brace? What am I doing here? What's the story? And uh, it uh, bummed out, so I have to go. I have to finish the workout because I do three rounds, and I was only on the first round. So I still did my workout, Uh-oh. but now I'm just waddling around with a weird neck, stiff. And I, I nailed it. I could tell people were looking at me. They're like, "What's up with this guy?" Because I kept trying to turn. I looked like a lunatic. So uh, I knocked out the workout. I get it. I get back to the hotel. It's amazing. You don't realize how much you use your neck and everything when yeah. you when it hurts. Yeah, I'm sucking the sh- dick the whole thing. Yeah, cunnilingus, rim job, the whole thing. My I'm taking showers. Like yeah, I'm all cricked up and cracked up. Brutal, brutal. I performed that night. I can't see the audience to my left and my right. I'm just staring right straight. I have to turn my whole body to look at them. Right. I looked like a lunatic. A, a fucking, lunatic. Yes, it was a scarecrow up there. So uh, that was hell. So the next day, I pass out. I'm, I'm trying not to drink. I'm just gonna, you know, live it up. Boy, not drinking. You have so much time. It's amazing. Yeah, a lot of time. You don't spend time at night drinking, and then you don't spend time hungover in the day. It's crazy. Mandolin. I got so much done. So uh, the next day, I walked to get some pho, which because it's not my. I, it's, uh, I was in an Indian neighborhood in this uh, Sunnyvale. So it's all just like knock, tick, and tick, knock, and neck, crick, and all this. I don't know what I'm eating. Uh, you can only eat so much Indian before your asshole, you know, combusts. Yeah. And uh, so I was like, I need to mix it up. So I go to the pho place, and I'm walking back. I'm on an Asian kick, I guess. I see a massage parlor. Ooh. And I go, you know what? I heard your little uh, voice in my head, and it was like, come on, live your life, you, you homo. You never do anything. Stretch it out. Live. You're making a million dollars, whatever you say. Buddy boy. And I was like, all right, I'm going in. I go in the massage place, and they say it's like a nice Asian lady who barely speaks English. And she's like, hey, you want uh, rubby rub? And I was like, I do. And uh, she's like, all right, it'll be 60 bucks for an hour, 35 for 30. I go, give me the 30. I can't make an hour yet. I'm not there. That's cheap. That's pretty cheap. Right? I don't, I've never gotten a massage. I haven't either, but it was a real hole in the wall. Yeah, I can't have someone touching me, but... Yeah. That seems you should, affordable. You should try it. It was pretty good. I can't do it. I've tried a million times. I'll come they, with you. I'll hold your hand. They get near me, and I just... I'm, right now, I'm freaking out thinking about it. No, it's great. I don't want a hand on me. I'll massage you first, then we'll go there. All right. I'll work it. in. So I go in, and it's uh, it's quite an experience. Really? You should go. It's like, you, you, you give them the money, you sit down. It's like a doctor's office, and they go, all right, you're up, Mr. Normand. And I'm like, okay, thanks. They bring you back to this room. You just walk down a hallway. It's all just... Uh, you know, massage tables in rooms and rooms and rooms. And you finally get to your room. And uh, she goes, yeah, you got to get naked. And I'm like, I'm not getting naked. And I, I don't mind getting naked, but I had gold bond all over my junk. Uh. It's, a hot, it's hot out there. So I like to really spread that cocaine on my sack. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I had just cut. I looked like a, a beignet from the waist down. You What's know? a beignet? Yeah, it's a, a, a dessert covered in confectionery sugar. Oh, I don't, I'm not familiar. I know Ben Gay. Well, everybody knows about a beignet. Pull up a pic. All right. So uh, you never seen that rose, uh, that uh, Marilyn Monroe beignet pic? No. All right. Well, I feel like I touched a nerve with that Marilyn Monroe. Well, it's a very iconic poster. I've never seen it. Neither is he or him. Yeah, well, he's 11, and, and Shelby, he doesn't leave the studio. And he's then, online uh, all day. All right, well. All right, well, how old are you, anyway? 21. 21. 21. You've seen the, the dress blowing up? Yeah. All right. What movie is it from? Oh, my God. Incorrect, sir, but excellent attempt. 
This guy thinks he's better than me. Uh huh. I'm only kidding, Johnny. I'm joking. Oh, geez, are you mad? I'm kidding. Oh. All right. Well, this has gone off the rails. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so I get the massage, and uh, I, I totally I'm not getting naked. And she yelled at me. Oh, really? Which is, we, it's kind of fun having a woman being like, you need to get naked. Wow. And I, I was like, like, no. An Asian yell is kind of fun, though, because the accent. Yeah. She was like, get naked. <laughs> you know? And she like, a gong went off. Wow. And uh, yeah, I was like, I, I'm not getting naked. I'm covered in sawdust down here. I, I got nothing but, uh, yeah, just it, it's crazy. It looks like Bolivia in my pants. Did you tell her that there was a bunch of white snot nah, on your dick? She barely spoke English. I, I don't think I could have uh, been like, gold bond. Gold bar, baby powder. She wouldn't have gotten it. I see. So I was just like, I'm not taking my underwear off. She's like, okay, fine, whatever. Ba, 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 ba. You know, and then she did like a street fighter out the door. And uh, I was like, all right. So she closed the door. I get down to my my jimmies there. And I get on the bed, face down. I got my head in the weird little face hole. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, that was fun. And then in walks this immigrant. And she was a nice, lovely lady. And she goes, oh. And I was like, hey, hey, how are you? And uh, she uh, noticed the box. She's like, oh, no naked, no, no. I was like, ah, I'm not doing naked. She's like, all right, whatever. And so what are you wearing, jeans? No, in boxers. Oh, okay. And the whole time she's going at it, she fucking grunts. She goes, you want it hard or soft? I go, give it to me hard. I got a real crick here. Wow. And she goes, all right. And she went hard. I'm talking elbow in the spine, shoulder blade. She's on my ass, sitting on my ass, just like digging in, this tiny Asian woman. It was killing me. But you can't, I can't. I don't want to look like a wuss, so I just held it, you know? Oh, wow. And she's, like, getting under my shoulder blade. Oh, it was brutal. And uh, so the whole time you're just thinking, is she going to hand job me? That's all you're thinking about. Yeah, that's the what whole I want to know. How's it, the ending? It's in the air. It's up in the air. You know, the whole time you're just like, is she going to do this? Uh, I wouldn't mind it, although I am caked with, uh, you know, cement down there. But, yeah. But uh, uh, it wouldn't be bad. bad, bad. So you're just freaking out the whole time. Like, is she going to do it? And you're like, I am hard. I was hard the whole time. Well, here's what I wanted, though, because this is my question, because... They have that hole for the face where your face goes in, which yeah. is that giant pussy there. Yeah. But there's none of that for your dick. So how does your dick oh, get hard? Do you have well, to like lift your pelvis so it can adjust? No, I'm laying on stomach down so my dick is shooting out backwards. That's what I mean. I get yeah. those hard. It's like a fucking torture chamber. Yeah, well, it's weird because she at one point she lifts the, the cover and massages your hamstring. Ooh, baby. So if I was naked, it would have just been like... Ball and dick out the back. Yeah, you got a you got a hard beef string. Yeah, it was a real beef string. It was like a like a bat and two balls down there. Yeah, you know? <laughs> we gotta start calling chicks a beef string. I don't mind. A string's a little rough, but yeah. <laughs> Come on, it's not very generous. A beef pipe. Beef pipe! Oh, man, I watched Roy Wood Jr. last night. I was dying. He's funny. He just keeps calling his dick a pipe. It was about Titanic. He's like, you know what kind of pipe you have to lay with one time lay? She remembers it for 70 years. He's like, that's some great pipe. I was fucking crying. Oh, yeah, pipe is good. Woo, Roy Wood. Hey, yeah. Wood, that's ironic. Uh, All yeah. right, so anyway, so your dick's hard. It's blasting through the leather table. Johnny, I feel like I offended you. I was only joking. Oh, Oh, okay, great. He's fine. All right, so I'm panicking over here. <laughs> the crowd, the audience has no idea. There's an, in, an intern? Yeah. yeah, there's an intern named Johnny. Very attractive. Very boy. handsome guy. Yeah. yeah. All right, so my beef pipe's hanging out the back. It's exhaust coming out. It's queefing. It's going nuts. And, uh, yeah, thank God I had the boxers on, because that thing would have been just, it just been, you know. it was uh, Jettisoning. Thank you. Coming out of there. It's shooting back like a like a army jet. And, uh just ready to take <laughs> off like the uh, the table's the aircraft carrier you know <laughs> i can't stop. So, these strings a little rough just feeling like <laughs> string come on what am i <laughs> so uh yeah so she massages the thighs she, i think she hit a ball at one point it was kind of fun and then uh she goes okay we're done and i stood up and I had a, just a crazy boner in my body it was <laughs> totally obvious and she's like i think she's a little flattered and then i just tipped her some money and then I left. What do you give her? A thousand? What do well, you the, 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 the massage was thirty five, so I gave her fifteen, which I thought was pretty hefty. Wow, that's hefty, all right. What is that? A forty percenter? That's almost fifty. There you go. So it was forty. What? <laughs> so uh, yeah, that that was it. Then I walked out. I felt way better. and I feel pretty good. So wow. massaging, it's the ancient art. Yeah, good, good for you. Art of seduction. May I just make a quick comment and then I have a quick story and then we get a skedaddle. Oh skedel. shit! I'm sorry to know you had a story. Yeah, of course I got a story. What are you All talking right, about? You said you had nothing. My name's running the marquee there. But the hook uh, key, the what key? A hickey. Uh huh. Uh, can I just make a quick thing here? My my jeans are melting into my skin. It's 1,050 degrees in the studio right now. I understand the air conditioner is loud or something, but my 
God. Not good for my yeast. Yeah, it is. Cra- I'm bil- I got some yeast over here. My asshole is bleeding. <laughs> it is yeah. really, really toasty in here. A little warm. Little warm. Anyways, this mine's a quickie. I got a quick one-liner story. That's the new thing I'm, I'm bringing to the show. Please. So I'm leaving uh, the creek the other day, old uh, Friday night. I leave the creek. Wild show. Wild cats oh, is the yeah. show. And I don't want to get into it because I love those guys. I saw the photo. This show was really... Something else. Boy, but people that get offended by our podcast, they should get themselves a, a pair of tickets to the Wildcat oh, show at the Creek God, in the Cave. I bet. Because they would be puking AIDS for the rest of their life. Sure. I mean, this show is really meant to uh, offend. Uh-huh. Anyways, I eat my dick as hard as you can eat it. Hard uh, as I've ever ate it in my life. I do the, the thing rumor. where you walk out like Elvis. You just yeah. walk, pick out your bag, and you leave. All in one fell swoop. Oh, yeah. And I'm glad I did because I timed it just right. I ran down. The 7 train, the door's open. I jump on the 7, and it's me, a couple of uh, Lat- Latino, always Latinos on that, uh, that there 7, or an Asian. Yeah. And then there's one guy, older white guy, looks like, looks like my dad almost, gray mustache, baseball hat, little just typical, uh, I shouldn't say typical, that sounds prejudiced, but just a regular old white guy. Sure. And he's got himself a bag of pizza slices. He runs in. As he runs in, one of them slips out onto the floor, uh-huh. hits the floor of the subway, and I've, we've all been there. He drops his hot food. You're excited for your food. Yeah. You're excited. You get your pizza. You paid. It's hot. It's bubbling. It's boiling. You get just the right amount of spices on there. It falls. It lands on the subway floor, and this guy goes fucking bananas. He grabs his pizza slice, picks them off the floor, and just fucking whips it off the window <laughs> of the sub- while we're leaving. And yeah. there's nobody in the train. It's two guys and me and just yeah. him. He grabs the other slice and he throws it like a frisbee. Ah! Whips that off the thing. There's sauce everywhere. He goes and picks it up for another time. He's got like like a Donkey Kong. He's just whipping pizza slices. Wow. He rips the bag apart like Hulk Hogan rips his shirt. He's like, ah! Ah! and he's just throwing his pizza. And this guy had like a falling down moment. He Whoa. lost his mind. Wow. And then he just sat there like this. <laughs> breathing oh all hard out of his God. nose, boogers coming out, and there's just pizza all over it. And it was so hard not to just start laughing. Yeah, of course. I'm sure that he wanted to start laughing, too. Like, oh, my God. He's like, what am I doing? I'm yeah. crazy. But uh, he just annihilated two pizza slices because he dropped them on the floor. You know what you saw? You saw an adult tantrum. I saw a real adult tantrum. Yeah, because yeah. when you're a kid, you're allowed to do that shit. And when you're an adult, you kind of have you want to do it still. We're still human, yeah. but you got to hold it in. And he didn't hold it in. It was amazing. It was like one of the best things I've ever seen. It really it lifted the weight off of my bomb. I was yeah. like, well, that guy's having a worse night than i am and what's cool is he he didn't mind you being there he's like i'm still doing it yeah he didn't give a shit uh we probably there's some construction happening so there's a few knocks and, and nicks around the studio if you're hearing them oh i didn't even hear it but uh hey we gotta wrap up here oh yeah pizza train folks get on it yes choo choo all right yeah where are you gonna be what's cooking Oh, boy. Well, I have a Sunnyvale date hey! uh, coming up, but that's not until August, August I believe. I'm out yeah. there in August. Sarah's coming along with me. I got a uh, Syracuse Funny Bone. I know it's a kooky weekend, 4th of July weekend. Uh-huh. So it's June 30th through July 3rd. Syracuse, come out to that. And then uh, July 29th and 30th, if you're in the tri-state area, I'll be at Bananas in Hasbrook Heights, Woo-wee. July 29 and 30. And then I got uh, Dead Crow in Wilmington in August. I got Rooster Tea in August. Email me or, or tweet me if you want to find out where my website's a little kooky right now. You got a solid, uh, solid lineup coming up here. Yeah, September, October, November. I have zero gigs, it'll, but they'll um, come in. They'll come in. They'll, hopefully, they'll come all over my face. But uh, so come out to uh, Syracuse, Hasbrook Heights, and uh, Sunnyvale, and Wilmington, North Carolina. And then uh, get some T-shirts. Yeah, we sold some T-shirts. We got we got T-shirts. We got hoodies. Go to Hats. that fucking crazy website. Whatever yes. the fuck it is, merch and, cart motherfucker. Or yeah, yeah. merchcart dot com. Type in Tuesdays. There'll be a link in the uh, bio of the episode or whatever. Yeah, shell. And um, yeah, check me out on Instagram. Jack yeah. Comedy. Twitter. Hit the Facebook. Oh! I got an album date, July fifteenth. Oh, look at that! July fifteenth, and we're gonna, I think July thirteenth, we're gonna have an album release party slash show at the Ooh. stand. Oh, is that right? Yeah, it looks like the stand is gonna be where we do it, July thirteenth. I'm gonna try to get you on there. I'm trying to oh, put it together boy. now. I'd be honored, but I'm trying to put it together. So that's not definitive yet. But uh, July fifteenth is the album. Get ready, folks. It's called "Are You Mad at Me?" And uh, get ready and tell a friend, buy it, for God's sakes. I'm dying over here. I love it. I love it. Big news. Yes. All right. Congratulations there, Fatty. Well, uh, I'm cooking with some, some grease here. We got some. We got a hot beef string of shows coming up. Uh, July 
first, I'm in Bloomington at the Comedy Attic. So come on out. I've got some emails, people coming to that. So come on out. It's a great club, great town. Comedy Attic in Bloomington. Then Austin on July 7th. Come out to that. Austin, Texas, one of my favorite clubs, Cap City. That's going to be a hoot and a holler. And then Syracuse as well, the Funny Bone, July 14th, that weekend. That's going to be a doozy. It's a real sad town, so come say hello. I'm joking. Then I'll be in Montreal for a while. Then Helium Comedy Club in Portland, August 18th. Always want to do that club. Love Portland. I love uh, coffee and lesbians, so that'll be great. And then I'm at the Funny Bone in... Ah, uh, shit. West Des Moines, oh, I spe- Iowa. I spent a lot of time at that one. Yeah, how'd you like it? I like it. It's good. Uh, I forget the chick's name. Liddy, Li- Liddy or Lighty. It's a great hotel. It's a Hilton, but that's one. If you don't have a car, you're in that hotel. Uh-huh. That's that. Uh-huh. But uh, maybe, you, maybe well, you got no dames anymore either because you're... Uh, you're. I can bring the, her. Maybe I can bring her. Bring her around. But it's a great hotel, nice pool, good gym. But it's a, it's a Wednesday through Sunday. Uh. And then I got snowed in for two days. I was there oh, Wednesday through Tuesday. Oh, my God. I remember uh, that. Yeah. But uh, but anyways, yeah, have fun out there. And we got some fans. I, a guy gave me a Des Moines shirt. Uh, I oh, forget really? his fucking name. And I wear that shirt all the time. Uh. So bad with names. And then but this is... Oh, whoever sorry. you are, thank you for that shirt. I wear it all the time. Yeah, this is a big one, uh, folks. I need you for this. The Joy Theater in New Orleans. <laughs> They're doing comedy in New Orleans now. Wow. So, uh, we'll get down there eventually. But yeah, yeah, come out to that Joy Theater. Sure we will. I used to go there as a kid uh, to watch movies, and now it's like a, a music venue kind of thing. They have comedy. So come to the Joy Theater right there in my hometown, New Orleans. Hometown hero. Bring a friend. My parents are coming. You can meet them. They're weird. All right, then I'm at Hilarities in Cleveland in September, but that's far away. So I love you all. You're all gay. Orlando, we're standing behind you. Fuck that guy. Pulse, we stand with you. <laughs> yeah, yep. All right. Oh, there's a construction. Uh, give Let's him help, that thing. That's fun. Take it easy. This has been a Stand Up Labs production. Powered by digital media. Subscribe to new and archive episodes wherever you listen to podcasts and find all of our shows at standuplabs.nyc. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Aha! Uh-huh.